So yes, uh, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to just go ahead and get right into things since there's uh, tight time deadlines. Uh, so today, what I'm going to talk about is our experience uh, with weaving reproducibility education into our institution's PhD program. Uh, and so I'll be speaking for myself and Dr. Elisa Sarkis. Uh, so just to kind of go over quickly what I'll be talking about this morning, start things off with kind of the terms I'm going to be using because as I'm sure many of you are pretty familiar, there can be a lot of jargon and how people use things can be a little bit different and conflicting. So just to sort of limit confusion as much as I can, I'm hoping to, uh, you know, get this, get, get that clarified at least for our purposes today. Uh, then I mean, basically the, the gist of today's talk will be really walking through our experiences and our process uh, in teaching reproducibility and replicability to our PhD program uh, in the hopes that that information may be of use to you in terms of thinking about teaching opportunities that may be possible at your institutions. Uh, we'll talk about our approach and some of the lessons that we've learned. So just to get uh, right off the bat, we'll start out talking about some of the terms we'll be using. So for today, I'm going to be following the uh, uh, NSF report of uh, reproducibility and replicability in science, which came out, I believe, early last year. Uh, and for their purposes and for my purposes, and actually the purposes of our uh, class that we offer, uh, we tend to use computational reproducibility. And if I just say reproducibility, basically what I'm talking about is being able to follow that kind of a uh, bitwise process running the same analyses on the same code and hopefully getting the same results. So hearkening back to the previous talk, uh, Lisa gave an example of there were all these scripts and it wasn't clear how to use them. The idea with computational reproducibility is just talking about how to go through that process of following scripts. Uh, regarding experimental rep replicability, uh, basically using the same protocols, collecting new data and getting consistent results. So it doesn't have to be the same sort of bitwise uh, you know, ultimate results down to the, you know, the nth degree, but it's getting the same general consistent results. And of course, generalizability related, uh, kind of being able to take those results and broaden them outside of the original context. So I realize this, the kind of environment of definitions may be at times somewhat fraught, um, and I do not mean to discount anybody else's usage, but just so that we're all on the same page, this is how I'll be using terms today. Uh, so rigor and reproducibility, I'm not sure how many of you are all from the sort of uh, biomedical life sciences arena, but this is sort of language that the NIH uses. Uh, starting in 2016, they issued uh, what were then new guidelines uh, regarding what they call rigor and reproducibility, which consists of four elements that all relate to what we're broadly thinking of as uh, reproducibility and replicability. So the scientific premise, basically being able to justify what you're doing based on what's been done before. The rigor of the proposed research, use of biological variables and authentication. So we've been hearing bits about all of these throughout the talks this morning, but just to be clear of what the NIH specifically requires. And that year they also began requiring that uh, recipients of training and research grants must provide uh, instruction to their, uh, to their students in rigor and reproducibility. Uh, and that's sort of how we became involved. Uh, so if I refer to the NYU Grossman School of Medicine, Sackler Institute of Biomedical uh, Sciences, PhD program, I might just shorten that to PhD program, but if I use any of these terms, I'm basically talking about the same thing. It's our institution's PhD program. Uh, it really has a wide range going from biostats. Uh, we talk, they've got genomics. Uh, this this doc diagram over on the right is something that they provide on their site, just showing a general broad breadth of topics. There's about 50 students each year. Uh, and so this can make for some definite challenges with regards to us in terms of teaching, uh, because the sort of students who maybe are coming in very interested in genomics may have a very different set of skills than, for example, biostats or some of the uh, more epidemiologically focused students. Uh, and it can be kind of all over the map. So something we've definitely struggled with is kind of finding what is that common language and how do we tie, for example, our examples to something that's gonna make sense to everybody but not be irrelevant for a large swath of the class. And it's definitely been a balancing act, uh, but something that we're learning each year as we go. So some history of our involvement in teaching this class. 
Uh, so in 2015, uh, Kevin Reed, who I believe I heard was attending or viewing this webinar, so hi, Kevin, uh, and Elisa Circus, uh, hosted an optional workshop on data management open to our uh, medical community, our general uh, user community, but definitely was uh, heavily marketed towards this uh, PhD research group. Uh, and they were focusing on research data management, uh, but unfortunately, and to their uh, dissatisfaction, had very low attendance despite offering what we knew uh, or were confident was very important information for researchers and could be very useful in terms of their data management needs. This was brought up by our library leadership at the time uh, in a meeting with the research administration, which after some back and forth eventually led to the leadership of the grad program uh, suggesting that we offer an optional research skills class, uh, providing a, a general selection of skills that would be taught by the library. Initially, it was there were not enough people signed up, so we held off for another year. In 2016, uh, they decided to make it mandatory because they really wanted uh, these students to be getting this material, but also because there was this NIH new NIH requirement that rigor and reproducibility uh, would be taught to uh, the students in training grant programs. Uh, so it was made mandatory for all of our first year students. And at the time, it was a bit of a grab bag of topics. It was not explicitly a rigor and reproducibility class, even though that was uh, you know, a driving force behind making it required. So we taught things like, uh, we did teach rigor and reproducibility, but we also taught some more uh, you know, library core skills things like lit searching, uh, we taught data management and so on, various things. It kind of felt uh, very, to me at least, it felt very all over the map. We, we had a wide variety of things, wide variety of instructors uh, from week to week, and it was an eight week, one credit class. Uh, and there were definitely steady improvements. The first year was, uh, as you may imagine, a bit of a struggle, uh, but over time we came to learn more. We learned more about uh, effective pedagogy methods. Uh, we just learned from the experience of doing it. So both informal and kind of formal learning about how to better teach to these students. Uh, but even still with the improvements we were making, we definitely could see that there were clear gaps in terms of the mastery that the students were uh, displaying, as well as we had a lot of challenges in making valid assessments. So by that, I mean, uh, having the the ex exams actually meaningfully assess their their performance. So perhaps they, the students might be answering questions, multiple choice questions correctly, but it wasn't clear to us that they were really learning anything useful. Or conversely, we were seeing a lot of challenges, particularly around search skills that may have come down to different understandings of the language used uh, that could definitely have led to challenges. And so after this period of a couple of years, we definitely noted that there was uh, not the best evaluations from the students and also when we reflected on the experience ourselves we felt a fair degree of dissatisfaction that it felt like really a struggle each time. Uh, so in the past year what we did or last year rather uh, what we did was we overhauled this class to focus specifically on rigor and reproducibility. So this was again reflecting new NIH requirements. Uh, so some of the topics that we had been teaching, such as uh, literature searching, we could reframe as focusing on how to find that scientific premise, which again was one of those NIH requirements uh, regarding rigor and reproducibility. Others like replicability, which previously had only been a one, uh, one class period topic, so about an hour and a half of topic, was extended greatly. Uh, other things were dropped. So we dropped, uh, for example, focus on teaching things like uh, data visualization and GitHub, and instead focused more on computational reproducibility. So teaching R to the students with the hope that then it could sort of act as a uh, something that would feed naturally into the their further data analysis classes that they take later in the curriculum. Uh, so, so far we've offered this once uh, this past fall, but we'll also be beginning it actually a week from tomorrow. So we're kind of ramping up for the new semester. Uh, but regarding that one semester that we did, uh, we have found that in general, the students performed much more effectively in terms of the uh, exam that we provided. And rather than in the past where we tried to more uh, test them on knowledge obtained, so more of a sort of straight ahead, uh, you know, please choose the correct answer, please write in the correct answer type exam, we've moved, shifted more towards reflections on how they feel 
uh, reproducibility and replicability applies to their research and some of the challenges there. And we found uh, that this can sort of reflect more critical thinking on the part of the students and also sort of removes these issues, which uh, in retrospect, I do think we're sort of coming from uh, differences in understanding of what we meant in the various questions. Uh, also, at least, I mean, it's only one semester of information, uh, but the evaluations were very positive this go round, and we, the instructors, found it to be a much more pleasant experience, both in terms of offering the class as one unified topic uh, and in terms of the experience of sort of, you know, running the exams, evaluating the class. Also, that this past year, uh, I was invited by the same program, so because of the context we formed to teach R again to the same group but in their second year for a data analysis class. So this further allowed us to work with this rigor and reproducibility background to weave this into their instruction. So we're again as I mentioned we're gearing up for the next semester and we're also looking to really weave in this uh, rigor and reproducibility topic into their data analysis uh, learning since we'll be uh, the library will be taking an active role with regards to the R programming portion that they do for their data analysis uh, class, essentially. Uh, so to dive into some lessons learned throughout this process, uh, one of the first things which sort of uh, perhaps it might border on a cliche, but really saying yes has led to many opportunities. So initially, this was not really meant as a rigor and reproducibility class per se, uh, but by agreeing to do sort of a more general skills, we were able to take advantage of opportunities that evolved over time and really uh, become more and more enmeshed into this program and provide greater uh, rigor and reproducibility uh, teaching opportunities. Uh, I definitely feel like the library was very well positioned to teach this class. Uh, part of it is definitely our expertise with regards to thinking about the whole research life cycle, thinking about things from planning uh, to uh, publishing a study, uh, as well as things like establishing scientific premise. And also, I think that in general, the librarian profession has a draws people with a large degree of curiosity, a large degree of willingness to think about these sort of issues holistically and adapt to learn the materials needed where there are gaps, so that we've been able to really uh, provide these students with a, a compelling education and really dive in in a way that I think the topic deserves and frankly that the students deserve. Uh, for such an important topic. Uh, also, in our context, we do have the biostats students do not take it with the library. They take it separate uh, because they've got a slightly more statistics focused uh, reproducibility uh, uh, curriculum. Uh, but we have uh, wound up teaching about half of their sessions and many of the other slides they use were actually reused and updated to be slightly more um, computational in focus. So even, even when we weren't teaching it, our background was uh, appreciated by the biostats professor. Uh, a unified theme also proved to be uh, more understandable. So by focusing in explicitly on rigor and reproducibility as opposed to more of a skills approach, uh, we felt that it was more coherent than having multiple topics on multiple, other, multiple uh, things that were less connected. And the last thing we learned was that assessment can definitely be very challenging, um, which Again, for those of you who've uh, taught workshops and classes will not be in any way surprising, but it has definitely been a struggle and I don't wanna understate that fact. Um, and that the switch to having more short response essays to display that they could think about critically the issues relating to rigor and reproducibility uh, wound up to be slightly more useful for us in terms of seeing that they really understood the material and less of a headache in terms of saying, does this mean anything? And also they may have misunderstood the wording of the question, but do we still, you know, how do we sort of navigate that environment? Uh, so to conclude, basically by being available to teach and having this curiosity, curiosity. and flexibility to uh, teach this topic uh, led to us being able to really engage with the, our PhD program here and our PhD curriculum. Uh, the library is very well positioned to teach this topic because of our high level focus on the research life cycle. Um, and because it's only likely to become more important, I really do think that uh, educational outreach can be a great way for libraries and librarians to become engaged in uh, rigor and reproducibility. Uh, so that said, that concludes my time and my uh, talk. So I'll be happy to answer any questions that are in the chat box later. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for your time.